Hello and welcome to this class of basic macroeconomics. I am Muhammad Nadeem Sarwar. Today we shall discuss the basic concepts that are used in macroeconomics. The reference books for this lecture are Macroeconomics by Robert J. Gordon, Macroeconomics by Oliver Blanchard, and Macroeconomics by N. Gregory Menke. Let's start this lecture by revising basic concepts of macroeconomics. Students, as you know, economics is a social science that studies the choices that economic agents, that is, individuals, businesses, governments, and the entire societies make as they cope with scarcity and incentives. Scarcity is the central concept which means that resources are fewer than the wants. There are two major branches of economics, the microeconomics and the macroeconomics. Microeconomics is the study of choices that individuals and businesses make. The way these choices interact in markets and the influence of the governments. Whereas the macroeconomics is the study of overall economy, that is, it studies the performance of national economy and the global economy. In simple words, microeconomics is the study of economics at individual level, whereas macroeconomics is the study of aggregates. The key issues of macroeconomics are unemployment, inflation, GDP, the issues of fluctuations, and long-run economic growth. Let's study these issues one by one. First, the unemployment. To understand unemployment, first we need to see what is labor force. Students, labor force includes all the persons of a country who are willing and able to work. In other words, if we subtract the number of old age people, the number of underaged, disabled, and those who are not willing to work from population, we get labor force. And out of this labor force, those who are not working are counted as unemployed. So, unemployment is a situation in which an able-bodied person who is willing but is unable to find a work at current wage rate. A person willing to work full-time but gets part-time work is termed as underemployed. Unemployment rate measures in percentage out of labor force, how many people are unemployed? Usually, the unemployment is higher at high wage rate and lower at lower wage rates. The natural rate of unemployment is the average unemployment rate over a long period of time. In more technical words, it is the unemployment rate where output 
is equal to natural level of output prices are equal to expected prices and inflation rate is constant and there is no cyclical unemployment. However, to understand it fully, we need first to understand what is natural level of output, what are expected prices, what is inflation rate and what is cyclical unemployment. We shall cover these concepts later on. Listeners, the unemployment rate is one of the most tricky numbers to interpret. It is very much possible that in a bad state of economy, the unemployment rate is low, while in a good state of economy, it is high. Therefore, we have to look at unemployment rate along with labor force participation rate which is the ratio of labor force to population in percentage. Higher unemployment is associated with the chance that an unemployment and unemployed worker will find a job diminishes and the employed workers are at a higher risk of losing their jobs. Economists care about unemployment first because of its direct effect on the welfare of unemployed and second because it provides a signal that economy may not be using some of its resources efficiently. From the second viewpoint, a very low unemployment can also be a problem as it indicates that economy may be over utilizing its resources and run into labor shortages. So neither a very high nor a very low unemployment is good. We shall come back to this topic with more details and some technical models and insights about unemployment in later lectures. Second is inflation. Listeners, inflation is a situation of continuous increase in general price level of an economy over the time. An inflation rate is the percentage increase in general price level from one period to another period. Listeners, deflation is negative inflation. That is when overall price level is decreasing or when inflation is negative. While Disinflation means inflation rate is decreasing over the time, but it is still positive. That is, the price level is increasing at a decreasing rate. For example, in four consecutive years, if the inflation was 20%, 15%, 9%, and 4%, respectively, we say that this inflation is occurring even though price level is still increasing. What is general price level? Students, general price level is a number that represents prices of all the goods in an economy. Economy's general price level is measured by consumer price index, producer price index, or GDP deflator. 
कंज्यूमर प्राइस इंडेक्स और सीपीआई मैयर्स द वेटेड एवरेज प्राइस ऑफ ए बास्केट ऑफ कंज्यूमर गुड्स एंड सर्विसेज वेयर एज प्रोड्यूसर प्राइस इंडेक्स इज ए वेटेड इंडेक्स ऑफ प्राइसेस मैयर्ड एट होलसेल और प्रोड्यूसर लेवल द जीडीपी डिफ्लेटर इज द रेशो ऑफ नॉमिनल टू रियल जीडीपी Consumer Price Index or CPI is most commonly used. However, GDP deflator is better to be used. Since Consumer Price Index, Producer Price Index and GDP deflators are calculated from a base year, so a value of 109 of for example CPI means 9% inflation 100 means 0% and 98 means minus 2% inflation or 2% deflation this is compared with base year the question is is inflation always bad listeners if a higher inflation rate means just a faster but proportional increase in all prices and wages which is called as pure inflation the inflation would be only a minor inconvenience as relative prices would be unaffected but unfortunately there is no such thing as pure inflation we see that prices of some of the goods increase at a higher rate while prices of some of the goods increase at a lower rate therefore variation in relative prices changes income distribution which leads to more uncertainty and makes it harder for firms to make decisions about the future similarly taxation when interacts with inflation creates more distortions if tax brackets are not adjusted for inflation however inflation reduces unemployment at least in short run high deflation would create many of the same problems as high inflation from distortions to increased uncertainty and increased unemployment at least in short run so inflation is neither always good nor always bad third basic concept is gross domestic product or gdp gdp measures the output of an economy in a given period for example in a year in a quarter or in a month the nile colloid an economist says that gdp adds up everything from nails to toothbrushes tractors shoes haircuts management consultancy street cleaning yoga teaching plates bandages books and millions of other services and products in the economy formally gdp is the market value of all the goods and services that are produced in an economy in a given period of time it also includes goods and services that are produced by the government and their value to us is how much it costs to produce them as you know we cannot 
add the number of cars with number of chairs with the number of teaching services produced with the quantity of haircuts therefore we convert all the goods and services in numeric value by multiplying them with their prices and then add up to get a number of GDP. For example, GDP is the price of a yoga lesson multiplied by the number of yoga lessons plus the price of a book multiplied by the number of books produced in that time period and so on. Therefore, GDP is the sum of price multiplied by the quantity of each commodity produced in an economy during the given time period. Let's see what is the difference between nominal GDP and real GDP. Listeners, to know about the progress of an economy over the time, we need to compare the quantity of goods and services produced in an economy over a period of time. This is where the terms nominal and real GDP comes to play. Nominal GDP is a measure of GDP using current year prices and current year quantities. Therefore, for year to year, nominal GDP is affected by changes in the prices, changes in the quantities or changes in both. On the other hand, a mayor of GDP that only focuses on quantities of goods and services being produced in an economy is called real GDP. Therefore, real GDP is affected only by the changes in the quantities of goods and services. Question arises, how can we measure real GDP? As noted earlier, we cannot add together the number of computers shoes, restaurant meals, and so on. So it is not possible to measure real GDP directly. To track what is happening to real GDP, we begin by selecting a base year. For example, the year 2010. Then we define real GDP in 2011 by multiplying the 2011 quantities by 2010 prices. Similarly, for year 2012, we multiply the quantities of 2012 with the prices of 2010. As the prices are held constant over the years, therefore, a change in GDP only comes from a change in quantities. This is the calculation of real GDP. If using base year prices, the GDP is going up, that is, the real GDP is increasing, we can infer that economy is producing more and more commodities, hence it is growing. The real GDP is also called GDP at constant prices. If we graph nominal and real GDP of a country, we may find a year where both nominal and real GDP are equal. This indicates that 
this is base here next question is is the real gdp a good measure to compare economic development of different countries the answer is no why let's understand it considering 2010 as base year the real gdp for for example india can be higher than the real gdp of any country for example pakistan if the base year prices used for india are higher or in particular year the indian economy produced more quantities or it can be because of both therefore to compare gdp across the countries we need a common set of prices for both countries so that the issues of different prices across the countries may be resolved such a common set of prices is known as purchasing power parity prices the ppp or purchasing power parity is a statistical correction allowing comparisons of amount of goods people can buy in different countries that have different currencies so ppp after dealing with price differences and exchange rate differences gives us a common set of prices that we can use when making comparison across the countries next is the gdp growth rate gdp growth rate in terms of percentage measures how much gdp is changed compared to previous year the formula for gdp growth rate is this formula is used to calculate nominal gdp growth rate real gdp growth rate or gdp growth rate when gdp is measured at purchasing power parity however real gdp growth rate can also be calculated by subtracting inflation rate from nominal gdp growth rate per capita gdp or per capita income is the average income per person of an economy this is that's all for today's lecture in the next lecture we shall introduce ourselves with productivity growth business cycle the stabilization policies and long run economic growth you are welcome to post your questions and give your feedback in comments please consider subscribing the channel thank you and